Hello everybody and welcome back to our brand new episode of NASCAR Heat for Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day today. We go to Chicagoland in both the Xfinity Series and in the Cup Series where we had subscriber uh, Aiden Beck in the car for us here today as he went down towards uh, turns one for this opening lap here in Chicago. Chicago being a very tough track for uh, our team and myself as a driver in Xfinity and in the Cup Series. So I uh, certainly wasn't really looking forward to this race uh, as I just never really run here. I don't even know if I've ever gotten a top 10 here, but uh, Aiden came through a little bit later on in this race, running in about the midfield. You saw him battling with the 0-1, the 78 of BJ McLeod uh, throughout uh, this race. So yeah, he certainly struggled to work his way through the field here today in Chicago, just the way the track is, like I was talking about, but we came through to the final lap as he came through turns three and out of turn four, heading down this front straightaway side by side there with uh, one of the Toyotas on his own side as he crossed the line uh, to get a half decent finish considering how Chicago is 22nd. Definitely, definitely looks like we're going to have to get a win if we want to get into the playoffs for our Xfinity team considering the slow start to the season. And as we came through though into Cup Series qualifying, heading down this front straight away a typical Chicagoland effort as we come through the cross line at 30.652 we go p18 here in Chicago so certainly about the uh, idea starting position here in Chicago as we usually struggle but Kyle Busch is on the pole welcome to Chicagoland Speedway for the Camping World 400 this mile and a half d-shaped trial is going to be a formidable challenge will we see a close finish today or will someone breeze to victory here in the Windy City Let's send it down to the track and find All out. All right. Thank you, Rick Allen. We're ready to go green here for the Camping World 400 at Chicagoland Speedway. Brendan Gaughan looks a bit slow today in that 62 car, which is always slow anyways. Ty Dillon uh, posted some fast laps in practice. Tyler Reddick failed pre-race inspection, so he is sent to the back as we get ready to go green from the 18th starting position here in Chicago. Matt Benedetto in the 95 on our inside. Kyle Busch with six wins on the season. Looks to make it seven today as he leads the field to the green flag here at Chicagoland speedway behind us. We've got Chris Busher and William Byron, two drivers battling out for uh, some of the final spots in the playoff grid. Jimmy Johnson also involved in that battle, but Chris Busher has had a very uh, stellar season so far. He's trying to point his way in in that 37 car, uh, so hopefully uh, we can see him run strong throughout the rest of this uh, regular season. It's going to come down to likely uh, Chris Busher, Jimmy Johnson, and William Byron for those final three positions. Right now, at least, that's what it looks like it's going to be uh, for that playoff battle. Now it's come through turns three and and turns four running p20 as we exit turn four so like i said chicago always oh, just a tough time for me and i was hoping that hopefully we could figure something out i didn't even bother changing like the adjustments of the car from what we had last season i just kind of went into this race and just said uh, let's just kind of survive and see what can happen now as we are already getting very tight through turns one and turns two actually getting into the wall on the exit of the corner and that already is a setback early in this race as we would lose some time we would actually be able to fight our way back up though to p19 as a caution actually would come out here uh, with a little bit to go in the stage still. So early on in stage one, we get a caution as we climb back up to P19 and get ready to go green. There was no need for pit stop, so we get straight back into the action here in Chicago. Kyle Busch at this point still leading the way after the first, you know, seven, eight laps as we start lap 10 now here on the restart. Alex Bowman in the 88 behind us. Alex Bowman passing what about the, or right around the midway point of the season. Alex Bowman is the only Hendrick Motorsports driver with the victory so far uh, this season in our career mode. Do you think Chase Elliott, he would be leading that Hendrick club? But no, it's been Alex Bowman leading the way for that team this whole season. As we go three wide with the 95 of DiBenedetto and the 42 of Kyle Larson uh, for Chip Ganassi Racing. Now has come through the center of the corner just trying to make up whatever time we can here uh, with the opportunity on this restart, obviously. Now, as it seems like the longer the run goes, uh, that it's going to at least help us here in Chicago, uh, but certainly don't really know what our chances are quite yet because, like I said, we struggle so much to even get a top 10 at this track. I don't think uh, we've ever gotten a top 10 here, even in NASCAR Heat 3, but we get to the inside of the seven-time champion of Jimmy Johnson. He would actually stay clear of me. We came through on lap 16 in this big group of cars right here that couldn't quite get away from each other, but I was following Jimmy Johnson on that bottom lane as we came through turns three and at turns four. But I just kind of continued to follow that 48 through the center of the corner down this front straightaway, and that would obviously allow us to kind of just work our way slowly through this group of cars within the next couple laps. There was only a few laps to go at this point in the stage. I think there was four to go uh, once we crossed the line. I didn't see the lap count on the screen, but like I said, we kind of just followed that 48 through, and we would get away from this pack of cars. We would pass uh, everyone, Hamlin, Almirola, the 14, and we would climb up all the way to P8 to the point where we were approaching the final lap in the stage. Now, just in front of this group of cars, uh, now 
now is Jimmy Johnson with P6. Harvick 7th on this final lap in the stage. Kyle Busch still leads, looking to add yet another playoff point to his playoff point count as we come through, though, up the inside of our Stuart Haas racing teammate of Kevin Harvick as we exit turn 2 down the spike straightaway. We have a really good run, actually, up the inside of the 48 of Jimmy Johnson as we go down into turn 3 side by side with the 7 time champion. Now, as we come through the center of the corner, we actually hit the apron and a little bit sideways we go, but we hang on to it, keep it off the 48. Johnson actually is able to get ahead of us as we come through, crossing the line here for stage one, P7 in the first stage in Chicago, which was very exceptional considering our track record here, so I was very happy with that. Kyle Busch, though, wins the first stage and once again adds, continues to add playoff points uh, to his count as we would pay for two, can two cans of fuel and take four tires as well. No adjustments were needed, but we did actually gain two positions on the pit lane. So all of a sudden, getting ready for stage two, we find ourselves in the fifth position here with Kyle Busch and Joey Logano on the front row. Jones and Truex on row two. So three uh, Joe Gibbs racing cars in the top five as we come through to start the second stage. 17 laps here in stage two. So plenty of time for things to go uh, very well for us or go completely wrong. Now as Chris Busch was just behind us, we were mentioning earlier him being in the battle for that final playoff spot and today he is certainly turning it up. He finds himself in the top ten at the beginning of the second stage as we almost went three wide with Logano and Eric Jones. Eric Jones still uh, trying to find victory lane this season. And Chris Busher actually makes contact with our left side as we got into him there. Now as we slide up the track into Truex, he goes into the wall. We make big contact with the 48 of Jimmy Johnson. who goes spinning in traffic. And there's multiple cars involved. The 13, the 9, the 8, and the 6 of Ryan Newman all included here as we have an incident in Chicago. That just came out of absolutely nowhere. Uh, now as we will get right back into, obviously, the green flag action here because uh, we did not need to make a pit stop. But Jimmy Johnson battling for one of those final playoff spots has taken a huge hit here in Chicago. Chicago there as the 37 of Chris Busher he just sent it up my inside and unfortunately I was kind of committing to that bottom lane already and it was just kind of both on our side it was a bit of his fault I felt and obviously a bit of my fault I just came down into him and we made contact we slid up into the 19 of Truex I tried to make sure we didn't go into the wall but unfortunately we did and I just kind of bounced off of Truex right into the side of the 48 of Jimmy Johnson who hopefully will be able to bounce back now but after this caution happened all of a sudden something just didn't feel right I started dropping back out of nowhere. There you see the 12 going around my outside. Hamlin going by. Almarola, our teammate, would go by. We had fallen outside of the top 10, and we had continued to fall down the order at this point as we would fall outside of the top 15, down to P17. Jimmy Johnson, who just crashed, he had gone past us as we came through turns 3 and turns 4. We actually got to the wall through the center of the corner out of turns 4 and continued to drop. We would fight back, though, to P22 later on in this stage. So, stage 2 turned into a complete disaster here in Chicago. Now, as we would be able to fight our way back up, though, to P17 17 by the final lap in the stage. Johnson up there in P16. Joey Logano leading the way at this point here as he went down this back straightaway. As we closed in on the back of Jimmy Johnson, obviously I would like to help uh, the 48 of Jimmy Johnson get some stage points. Obviously that's not going to happen here in stage two. So I was just kind of committing to getting around him here on this final lap in the stage through turns three and at turn four. Joey Logano would lead the way down that front straightaway. He would get the stage win here as we would be just ahead of Jimmy Johnson as 10th place crossed the line and we get the position of 16th here in stage two. So it certainly felt bad. Oh, actually, Kyle Busch won the stage, so he must have made a last lap pass in the second stage, but it certainly felt bad for what happened with Jimmy Johnson. We would pit for two cans of fuel, four tires, and actually, you see me there make a bit of a wedge adjustment, hoping that that will pay off a little bit. I just wanted the car to, the car to be a little bit looser. We would actually gain three positions on the pit lane. Martin Truex Jr. lost right. ten positions on the pit lane, so very unfortunate for him. Now is the third and final stage is underway here at Chicagoland Speedway. Behind us, we got the ten in the Six of Almarola and Ryan Newman, but Kyle Busch has been the story of the season. He has six wins. He's won two stages already today in Chicago, and he looks to get win number seven already of the season. We're like I said earlier in the video, we're pretty much at the halfway point of the season. He's got seven wins. I mean, if he keeps up at this rate, Kyle Busch could easily uh, go over 10 wins. He could probably get up to 13, 14 wins if he continues at this rate. As the 10 of Amarola sideways on our outside as we made a little bit of contact going down into turn three. Now as we exit turn four, uh, trying to get to the inside of my Stuart Haas racing teammate of Clint Boyer, who's still looking for career win number one, at least or, uh, in our career mode. He hasn't won a race in our career mode, uh, I should say, but obviously he's uh, got some wins in his career as come through the center of the corner now out of turn three so we would be able to get ahead of the 14 of Clint Boyer and just try to kind of climb our way back forwards to make up for everything that we lost in stage two because stage two is a complete disaster compared to stage one and we'd be running about P13 as we came through on lap 46. 
Kurt Busch and Hamlin side by side as there's actually a spinner in front of us. Tyler Reddick hard into the outside wall. Back into traffic. It's a huge crash. The big one strikes at Chicagoland a mile and a half. Many cars involved. You see a just complete cluster of cars or cluster of cars there. Bowman was involved. So many cars. William Byron. There's many of notables there as there was just a little bit too many to count for me. But obviously everyone decided they would end up coming to the pit lane. So I decided obviously I was going to come in too. And we actually go down all the way to P38. You'd all think right, now that might be because we took the four tires. No, it's because we actually had a bunch of cars stay out under that caution. So a bunch of fast cars are in the back and a bunch of slow cars are up front and that usually creates for a pretty wild restart. So now we know that it's going to get a little hectic here in Chicago. Certainly didn't expect to see the big one at a mile and a half racetrack, but it certainly happened today here in Chicago, and that's kind of the second big incident of the race. Obviously, the Johnson one was pretty big too, but that one right there was even bigger as Tyler Reddick just went crashing in the traffic. As you see me going three wide on the outside here, as you can see, all the slow cars making things very interesting with 18 laps to go in Chicago now as we try to get around the outside of Hamlin, but we're going to go for a quick crank it up here in the for, or for the first time today in Chicago. There you had your crank it up as it's just been crazy racing on this restart now as it's been really hard to get anywhere as everyone's just three wide by three by three it was and obviously we found that very hard for myself to be able to move our way forwards but thankfully we would get to the inside and start to climb our way back forwards now as the slow traffic was still in the way I just couldn't go anywhere but we had finally started to find something we climbed up inside of the top 25 and would just continue to move forward Chase Elliott at this point was leading the way as we crossed the line we would continue to climb up to P12 on the inside of Kyle Busch who was leading the race early on and now you see still these slower cars that, and there's still some fast cars up here but on old tires that stayed out so we can still get past them as we came through now up inside the top 10 with just 10 laps to go but Elliott running away with the victory at this point because of everyone being slowed up so Elliott just was hoping that we wouldn't get a caution we come through now down the back straightaway going three wide up the middle between Bowman and Lagano just doing everything I can to quickly move move my way through the field as we come through turn three and turn four Jones into the outside wall there behind us with the blown tire and that's actually going to bring out a caution with less than 10 laps to go and there you see the guys that stayed out earlier all have to come to the pit lane now as they would have had to come in under green but now they will come in under caution still quite a few drivers now as you would get ready to go green from P4 here for potentially the final restart in Chicago this could be an incredibly important restart. We find ourselves all of a sudden inside the top five here. Now as we're back underway, Brad Keselowski and Martin Truex Jr. lead the way. Behind us, we got the fastest car here of Kyle Busch. Kyle Larson up inside the top ten there is a notable as well. Now as Hamlin's also up there as we go down into turns one on this potentially, like I said, final restart. There's a little bit of contact with the 22 of Joey Logano when we push up the track and Kyle Busch tries to get to my inside. Sure enough, he is on our inside as we were actually three wide down the back straightaway with Kyle Busch and Ryan Newman as we go down into turns three. Keselowski chooses the top lane as Kyle Busch is already flying on that bottom lane. Sure enough, he would continue his way through as we came through on lap 64, going three wide of the inside of the 22, down into turn three. Kyle Busch, he's going to go three wide for the lead here. Late in Chicago, he goes from uh, third to first in one set of corners, and now obviously we seem to have some speed too out of nowhere. We use that draft from the one car. We're going to cut down to the apron, and we're going to make a move for P2 down into turns one with just three laps to go. We would take over second, and now it's going through to just two laps to go behind us, Lugano and Kurt Busch battling it out. Kyle Busch, he jumps up to the top and all of a sudden, we find ourselves with a chance to win here in Chicago as we exit turn two, heading down the back straightaway. Kyle Busch leads away with a lap and a half to go, looking for win number seven of the season. Logano trying to put on the pressure from P3 as we go through the center of turns three and turns four, approaching the final lap here in Chicago land, but there's actually trouble behind us. Ryan Blaney has gone into the outside while he's having issues, and Chase Elliott, Eric Almarola both involved as well as the caution comes out, and that will force overtime as Kyle Busch was just moments from crossing the line to start the final lap.
So Kyle Busch will lead the way here for overtime. We're on the outside, and that's a big disadvantage as overtime is underway here in Chicago. Can we get our first win at this mile-and-a-half racetrack? Now as we're going to have to side drop the 18 very hard if we want to have a chance here as Logano had a very poor restart behind me. I could have slid in behind the 18 of Kyle Busch, but we're still side drafting him even through the center of the corner, making a little bit of contact with Kyle Busch. Is there three wide behind us? Logano right back to the 18 of Kyle Busch as we make contact with the 22, nearly getting hooked as we continue to side draft the 18, but give him the room he needs down into turns three. Three wide behind us between Logano, Kislowski, and Kurt Busch, but Logano gets clear now as we exit turn four, and he's going to have the advantage over us as we drop down to P3 as we come through to start the final lap here in Chicago Land. Kyle Busch in command now as we fall in behind the 22 and may immediately use that draft to get to his inside through turns one. He's sideways as we did make a little bit of contact. He saves it, an incredible save by the 22 of Joey Logano as we exit turn two. Kyle Busch well ahead, but we have the draft, and we close up really quick actually as we go down this back straightaway for the final time here in Chicago. We're going to get close to his bumpers, we send it in deep, but it's not close enough as we're just so close to the 18's bumper, but not quite close enough as we're still on his bumper as we exit turn four, but he has a better exit, and Kyle Busch is going to barely hang on for win number seven on the season, and we get through to get P2, an incredible finish for us here in Chicago. One heck of a race here this uh, time around in Chicagoland. Usually it doesn't produce a great race, but it did today. Uh, big crash for Jimmy Johnson. The big one struck, uh, obviously, in Stage 3. We had a pretty good finish as well here with some overtime uh, drama. Now, as I said after the race, great day considering where we normally finish here. I could have dumped Kyle, but that's not how I race. I sent it in quite deep into Turn 3, hoping I could maybe just move Kyle Busch. Uh, but I, I got within probably a couple centimeters of his uh, back bumper, and I just couldn't quite move him unfortunately uh, so I wanted to make it clean if possible uh, but unfortunately I couldn't even get to his back bumper uh, so close I was but man if we had had we if we would have been just a tiny bit closer who knows what could have happened but as always if you guys did enjoy this episode make sure to comment like and subscribe those would all be very appreciated in the next one we go back to some plate racing we had a big one in Chicago certainly could have a chance for a big one in Daytona so thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch this one there is the playoff grid on your screen Chris Buescher now only four points out. Kyle Larson, 26. So it's going to get interesting here at Daytona. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching, everyone, and have a great day.